Hi, I'm Andy, and this is a video uh, about how I wrote a snake game in ZX Spectrum Basic, and what my impressions of it were. So let's just prove it to you first by actually running my program, showing you that it works. So there's the snake. You move it around by pressing OPQA, which is the classic uh, Spectrum controls. And when you hit a wall, you die. So that proves it. Here's the code. Um, notice the line numbers. Notice uh, four loops. Uh, here's a GOSA, which we'll talk about later. And notice that comments are noted with the word REM. OK, so let's get on with it. So we'll start off by talking about uh, why you would write Snake in different languages, um, what's good about the Spectrum um, and Spectrum Basic. Then we'll have a look at how you do variables and flow control in this language, and then move on to really high-level constructs like subroutines. Um, we'll look at some of the really good things and wrinkles, um, some other stuff I don't have time to cover, uh, and then how to get more information. So first of all, why uh, why write Snake in all these different languages, which is what I'm attempting to do? Well, because Snake is a great game, uh, because it's an easy thing to write. Um, uh, I always use Snake as um, the language I write to help me get into a new, uh, the program I write to get into a new language. Um, uh, it's an easy, but it requires arrays, loops, and all that awkward interacting with the user stuff. Okay, so what is the ZX Spectrum? Well, it's a very lightweight uh, computer released in 1982. Uh, it's sort of le netbook style in terms of its size, uh, but it does require an external display. It will normally require a, uh, a TV with an analog uh, input. Uh, it has a, a very unique uh, keyboard, which is um, kind of um, grips your fingers, you might say, a sort of rubbery feel. Uh, British made, British designed. So. What is BASIC? Well, BASIC is a procedural programming language that was designed to teach beginners how to program. Uh, it's very high level. It has things like subroutines. Uh, some versions of BASIC have user-defined functions. Um, there are many incompatible dialects of BASIC. Uh, and this is just one of them we're looking at, uh, ZX Spectrum BASIC, which is the one that I'm most familiar with. So let's uh, see how you write code in it. Well, first of all, um, notice you need a line number for every line. And to write comments, you just type REM for remark, uh, and then you can type anything you like after that. Um, and then to define a variable, you say let, and then the name of the variable equals, and then the, um, the value of it. Variables can be either uh, numbers or strings, and their names, I think, can be only one letter. Um, and then if you want to change the value of E later, you can see the last line there. Um, that's how you set uh, E to be five more. Other types of variable you can have arrays. Uh, you need if you're going to use an array uh, called x, you need to um, declare it at the uh, before you use it in, with a dim statement, with dim for dimension. Um, so this is saying this is an array with 400 elements. And uh, do bear in mind if you're used to zero-based uh, uh, arrays, the arrays in Spectrum Basic are one-based. So the first element of the array. Uh, y is y brackets 1, and you address it using round brackets, not square brackets. Um, flow control. Well, this is a for loop, um, which lets the variable n change from 1 up to e, inclusive, I think. Uh, and uh, The body of this for loop is those two let statements. Notice that they're not indented in any way, or anything. there's no indication that uh, this, is, um, this is a flow control construct. Um, and then to end the loop, you say next n. Um, one point to note about line numbers. Um, for example, in this case, I've left um, ten a gap of ten numbers between each line number. Uh, it's absolutely crucial you leave yourself enough space to change your mind later, because it's really very awkward to um, renumber the lines of your program once it's written. You need to you need to have a machine code program that modifies the memory of the spectrum internally in order to change your line numbers. Um, okay, other things you can do for flow control. Um, here's an if statement, so if and then some condition. Notice a single equals um, for checking equality. Uh, and then you, and then you just type then and then what you want to happen afterwards. Uh, and so often what you'll need to do, because you, you haven't got much space on the, in the then part, is actually do a go to statement uh, after then, which will send you to some other piece of code which you can have, which can have multiple lines, and that go to uses the line numbers. 
Um, and here's how you would do something that looks a bit like a while loop. Um, initialize your I and then uh, basically check for the ending condition. And if you ended, jump to the end, which is what that go to 100 means on line 30. Um, if we haven't ended, do the body of the loop. And then on line 60, we loop back to line 30 and check again whether we've finished. So that's how you would come up with a while loop. Uh, and then if you want to get really advanced, um, using the most modern high-level techniques, you might want to use subroutines. Um, so in this case, the, um, the way you jump to a subroutine is you say go sub and then the line number. And then you can have as much code as you like inside there, including calls into other subroutines. And when you hit that return statement, the computer will magically know where you came from in order to get here. And it will jump back to the next line of code after the go sub call. Um, things that are really great about this language, um, really nice to use. Uh, you can loop backwards using this this construct of for loop, uh, and then step minus one or step or whatever step you like for your for loop, and it will just um, loop through. So that's uh, arguably easier to use than uh, C or Java style uh, looping construct. Uh, something that I found absolutely brilliant writing this program. You'll notice the program is very short. Uh, compared with the other snake programs that I've written. Um, in order to draw very basic graphics on the screen, like I've done, you can use this print at command, which draws a character at a particular point on the screen. You don't have to worry about uh, repainting the screen, anything like that. All you do is say, at this point on the screen, I want this character to appear, and it will appear there, and uh, the spectrum itself looks after the state of that, um, that screen full of characters for you. You don't have to worry about it. You just tell it what to draw where. Uh, really not, very simple to use. Uh, other things you've got in the language, you can uh, stick together your logical operators using OR and 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 things like that. You can have multiple statements on one line by using colon to finish one statement and start the next one. Uh, you've also got random numbers. Uh, somewhere near the beginning you say randomize, which initializes the random number generator. And then you just use RND um, and it, that gives you a random number. Uh, things that are a little bit more tricky about it, um, some things that, that potentially will prevent you using this uh, in your work. Um, it, there is only 16 kilobytes uh, of memory available on the ZX Spectrum 48K. Uh, despite the name, uh, the only uh, memory you can actually use is uh, 16 kilobytes. Um, there are serious performance issues writing uh, significant code in this language. My snake game started slowing down when the snake got longer than five um, uh, elements long. Um, I wrote my program extremely inefficiently and um, it is absolutely possible to write performant uh, code on a spectrum. Whether it's possible to write performant code in ZX Spectrum Basic, it may be more of a, an issue. Um, it certainly will be tricky to interface with modern hardware. Uh, if you use a physical ZX Spectrum or an emulator, uh, probably wouldn't be able to speak to modern hardware. Uh, no access to modern programming libraries or uh, other useful things. So you'll, you'll notice, unlike my other snake programs I've written, um, we don't have a, a coloured graphical uh, screen appearing on my Linux desktop. I, I've got the character-based user interface. Um, other things that I found tricky working with uh, Spectrum Basic, uh, the actual syntax can be inflexible, can feel quite difficult to work with. Um, there are no functions. Um, only subroutines uh, which aren't named, you just need a comment uh, before them. And it, you can't pass arguments into subroutines in the way you do with a function. Uh, no concept of classes or object-oriented programming. One of the uh, most annoying things is it's very hard to see what line of code is a comment. Um, the, just putting rem and then typing stuff afterwards doesn't pick it out as, as well as I would like. Um, and that actually leads me on to the next problem, which is that the uh, the the environment in which you write your ZX Spectrum basic programs is the the, the line based editor um, of the ZX Spectrum. So you type list to have a look at your program, and then you you can edit one line at a time uh, interactively. Um, if I had Vim or something, I could be doing syntax highlighting of my comments at the same time, which would be nice. Um, other features of ZX Spectrum and ZX Spectrum basic. Um, uh, because of the simplicity of the system, uh, it fits inside your brain. You can you can potentially understand the whole of ZX Spectrum Basic, understand all of its keywords, without having to go and look them up on uh, 
a website. Uh, it's extremely stable. The, this uh, brand of ZX Spectrum Basic hasn't changed since its release in 1982. There have been some updated versions on different machines. Um, things, things that are, examples that are really nice uh, uh, and simple. For example, the screen. In order to draw things on the screen, you just put some stuff into memory, um, and that and that memory is actually the screen that displays on on the screen. It's harder to explain than it is to use. So to to draw a picture, you just say what bytes you want to go where in memory, and it gets drawn. Um, there are also drawing operations you can use in your, from your basic programs like um, the circle command, and you can directly access um, memory with with the peek and the poke commands, which you can actually use to insert machine code instructions into memory, and then uh, tell tell uh, the spectrum to execute them. Um, I want to finish this uh, video firstly by saying this book changed my life a, a massive amount. Thank you so much to Ian Stewart and Robin Jones for writing it. Um, I had a wonderful time programming my ZX Spectrum uh, in my youth. Uh, using this book which inspired and excited me about um, the programs that you could write and I honestly recommend um, that you read it if you if you want to uh, find out about programming uh, how exciting it can be I also recommend anyone writing a programming book especially one aimed at uh, kids uh, or younger people read this book and see how great it is okay um, if you'd like to uh, donate money to to me every time I make a video, a, a very small amount of money if you like, uh, go to look at my Patreon page. Um, you can sign up there to, to donate one dollar or something every time I make a new programming video. Um, that would be great if you did that. Um, if you want to find more of my videos, you can find them on YouTube and my YouTube channel. Uh, on Twitter, I'm at Andy Baylor. I tend to tweet about videos and blog posts that I've done. Uh, and I try to keep the amount of retweeting I do to a minimum. Um, on my blog you can find out about my open source projects and any videos that I'm working on and sort of general things that have annoyed me or I've figured out. And if you want to find out more about any of my open source projects specifically have a look at artificialworlds.net find the one there. Uh, please do subscribe and see you next time.